we discovered one day when a, a rancher came up and said, what the hell are you doing out here? And I said, very calmly, I'm Les Davis, I'm professor of anthropology at Montana State University, and we're here uh, developing one of the most important archaeological sites in the Western Hemisphere. Who are you? I'm Floyd Schmidt. I own this place. Between 12 and 15,000 years ago, the last advance of the Pleistocene glaciation receded to the north, and Paleo-Indians began to find their way to the rich headwaters of the Missouri and Yellowstone rivers. As we modern humans become further removed from the land and the consequences of limited resources, it may be more important than ever to discover and understand the natural and human heritage of Paleo-America. Every year, on the vast Montana landscape, teams of archaeologists, earth scientists, and students weather the scorching summer sun to uncover secrets of a distant past. And though he was not alone, one man played a critical role in this quest. Les Davis, a Montana boy from the High Line, gained his education in anthropology and became consumed with finding evidence of the first residents of the Northern Rockies. I would just simply guess that probably for, for 10,000 years, this uh, remarkable church source has been quarried by prehistoric peoples. This little trickle of water may not seem like much, but 13,000 years ago, Sheep Rock Spring attracted small herds of herbivores, some of which are now extinct. That includes horse, camel, bighorn sheep, and a variety of very large North American cat. Later, by some 4,000 years, the first peoples came here, and we've developed a record of occupation from about 10,000 years ago to 2,000 years ago. And uh, you see here, there's a single toe on this one, so this is from a horse. That one has actually evidence that two toes were coming off it, so it's from a split-hoofed animal, and it's it's from a mountain sheep. So How large would the horse have been? Well, this is a pony-sized horse, actually. Uh, something in the size of the, well, get really exotic. Tibetan wild asses are about this size today and it probably was something quite like what you get in Asia today. Like Sherlock Holmes, for almost 50 years, Les and his colleagues and students followed the clues and science to discover some of the most profound Paleo-Indian sites in North America. Archaeology and the allied disciplines that contribute information about paleo environments and past ecological systems are the, virtually the only way that we have of looking into deep human pasts uh, on our planet. 
There is no surviving uh, Native American memory, so we must dig and extract these small bits of information and pieces of tangible materials uh, from the earth.